So at least if we're talking about the high risk population, we're not yet really there um, where we have sort of a biomarker. Um, we have clinical information that we're using to kind of say, hey, this person is at higher risk for developing cancer. But we're not really there, at least in the high risk population, to kind of say, hey, this circulating biomarker is something that, you know, is relating to you going on and, and developing lung cancer, right? In the early stage setting, um, there are prognostic biomarkers, most of them genomic biomarkers, um, things like EGFR and things like KRAS. You know, we know that all of these genomic alterations that are driver mutations in the cancer do have prognostic implications and now oftentimes predictive um, implications as well, but that's more in the later stage setting. Um, I think another thing that we're starting to see in terms of biomarker development is the ctDNA development, and we're starting to utilize that more and more in lung cancer. So the way that would look is, you know, patients who go through treatment and then, you know, have ctDNA that's positive even after treatment, especially in the early stage, maybe those are the patients that you prioritize treatment for as opposed to those patients who maybe have minimal ctD. DNA or maybe negative, don't express any or aren't detecting ctDNA in the blood. So we have biomarkers like that, but we don't yet really have preventative biomarkers.